Hello everybody and welcome to a new series where I'm going to be building a router bit cabinet. We're going to completely over-engineer this. We're talking dovetails, mortise and tenon, frame and panel doors, other things. We'll just make it up as we go along, I think. Let's get going. So the router bit cabinet is going to be going on the wall up here, right above my lovely router table. This isn't something that I necessarily need, but it's something that I definitely want because under here, I've got, this is where all the storage of my router bits are currently. It suffices, lovely, like it works. Um, they do tend to rattle together quite a bit though. If you look at around here, we've got a rebate cutter that's kind of hitting this dovetail cutter and it's, it's not ideal. So I need to find storage for all of those bits. And then I've also got the bits down here, which are, We've got like the router table inserts, different hole sizes. I don't really like them taking up space on this shelf as well as wrenches. I just want to get it all into one completely over-engineered cabinet, to be honest. So the material we're going to be using for this is ash, uh, American white ash, is it? It doesn't really matter. So like I said, this is going to be dovetailed together. It's going to be, there you go, I'll lay it all out here so we can see the rough size of it. It's going to be massive, to be honest. I want to allow for expansion in the future to get, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing. It's going to be pretty big. I want to be able to get lots of bits in here in the future, lots of router accessories and stuff. And then we're going to have a shelf down here as well. And that is going to be the basic construction. So to begin with, we'll start planing this up, get it down to its final dimensions. Um, there will be plans available for this cabinet at the end of the series. What I'm going to do is build it first, make sure the design actually works, and then they'll be available from my website, which will be in the description. So, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm looking for the plans. <laughs> um, I've got the power tool workbench plans, but that's not what we're building today. I, I don't actually know where I've put them. Um, I'll just get my laptop. <laughs> did, did, you, uh, did you find the plans? I did not find the plans. So, I am going to be working to the cutting list instead and completely wing it in all honesty. So I'll just dovetail it today and then I'll do the, um, yeah, let's get the plans. Yeah, because I don't know where the shelf is at the moment. That's why yeah. Yeah, I'm talking to myself, aren't I? I mean, a little bit. <laughs> right, uh, let's get the old dovetailing kit out then. So we are going to be needing marking gauge times one because it's all the same thickness. Fret saw. My new Bad Axe Saws Dovetail Saw. I want to get some B-roll of that later because it is... Oh. So beautiful. I'm using that, my knife ruler. Ah, dovetail marker. 
so much kit. So for this dovetailed carcass, we are going to be doing, see dovetails on the corners, but we're going to be putting bleh, 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 bleh. We're going to be putting a mitre on the back, which will hide a groove that is going to hold the back panel in. So if we've got a groove going all the way up there and along the top panels as well, if you cut a dovetail, a through dovetail, it's visible on the end grain there if this was a tail or something going up through the top. So we're going to be disguising that in a mitre, which I'll show you how to cut now. The actual dovetailing process I'm going to skim over because I've already done a tutorial on that. So there's a link in the top corner as well as the description to that. Um, yeah, so to start with, we'll just start marking things out with the marking gauge and I'll get back to you when we're laying it out. All right, so I've just sized out the dovetails on this grid paper to make sure I actually get it right on the plans. So what we're going to be doing is cutting the tails of the dovetails on the longer components, which are going to be the uprights. That means that when pressure is applied or something is put on the bottom of the cabinet, then the wedging action of the dovetails is the correct way around. So if you cut the tails on that, then the more you put pressure on it, they have a chance of falling out. So this is something that I covered in my video, which woodworking joint should you use? Link to that is also in the top corner and the description. So we'll start laying out these joints now. Actually, wait, no, before that, I need to work out my face sides and face edges. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to pick which ones or which faces are going to be outside on the cabinet and which ones are going to be the front. So let's make that the front. And that can be the front on the other side. And that can be the top. Let me make that. Didn't want to do it that way around. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> I need to hide that ripliness. So we'll start marking out the tails first. He's getting these up in the vise. I've marked my face sides and face edges. So that's going to be the front of the cabinet. That's going to be the outside. Labeled what orientation they're in, so this is the right side, and also numbered the corners as well to ensure I don't create an S-shaped cabinet, which is very easy to do when you're doing dovetails. So I'll start marking this out. So the mitre on the back is going to be 20 millimeters, which will account for the cleat that is going to be holding this cabinet to the wall and the groove that the back panel is going to sit in. So I'll mark and gauge that from the back to give me a nice square or rectangle that I'll be mitering later and then from there I'll start marking out the dovetails so I'm going to make the pins relatively big on this I don't want them to be too fragile just because it isn't fine furniture this is a cabinet we're building for the workshop so we don't necessarily need it to be too decorative So with the dovetails, I'm going to be cutting straight to the line as I did in my dovetail tutorial video. But then for the mitre on the end, I'm going to leave it a little bit shy just so I can pair back to it with the chisel later on.
So as I said, I've left it slightly shy of the line that I scratched along the top here with the marking gauge. You could try and saw to that, but when I've got a marking gauge line, I like to try and chisel to it straight away. So what you don't want to do at this point is put it straight into that line at the top and whack it down because it's just going to split the grain and you don't know which way it's going to go. So what we're going to do instead is find the vertical line either side, it's there and there by the looks of it, and just pair it across and stop there. There we go. Now I'll do the same on the other side. It always helps to sort of sever it at the bottom like that so the fibres can split off. And then just follow the line all the way through to meet in the middle. And that way you can just follow it like that and you don't run the risk of them punching the grain off that back edge. And we'll get in there with a the smaller chisel break all that out and that is a 90 degree wall that is spot on the marking gauge line so we're going to do that for all three other sides two other sides three other joints and then we'll see you on the other side of that Right, so dovetails are all cut out and now it's time to start cutting the mitres on here. So to do that, I don't have a mitre square or anything like that, so I'm just gonna quickly set up the sliding bevel to do that. What we're gonna do here is create a one-to-one -one ratio in the same way you would create a one-to-eight ratio with a dovetail or a one-to-six or whatever. So I put a mark on the workbench and I'll measure, I don't know, 100 millimeters across. And then if I just get it square, I'd love to say I'm prepared. Square that second mark up and measure 100, is it 100 mil? Yeah, 100 mil up there. Join them up. And there is your one-to-one -one ratio, which you can then set your sliding bevel to. So these bits of the tails, these little pins here, or the finger joint things, they're gonna have the mitres on them. Really important here to make sure you miter it the correct way. So I'm just gonna draw them on roughly first. So then I've got a sort of visual cue when it comes to properly marking them out. And pop them in the vise. Get my knife, which I've also forgotten. I've lost it. Rob. <laughs> oh, where the... Oh, wait, no, that probably fell. There you go. I found it. It's fine. I found it. And then with that, we can knife across here to join the shoulder line to the top. And then we will rough cut these mitres with a cross cut saw. When you do this, be very careful when you get through to the other side as you'll see in a minute. So it's very easy to fall through and smash into the tail below. And I will inevitably do it on one of these. Bang. All right, 
right and then for the pins it's a little bit weird with these because you've kind of got a socket slash mitre thing going on which makes the corner of the joint look very weird uh, so to cut this we've got the line scratched along the top and what I'm going to do is square that down first so I've just got a rough guide and what I need to do with this is cut it with the saw up at 45 degrees Be careful not to cut through that back wall. That's as close as I dare. Yeah. Do that. And then chop the old corner off. And that is the rough mitre joint. So I'll continue with these and then we will see you on the other side. I thought it had something crushed in there, I put that in the voice. Oh, it did. God damn it. Oh. I should have seen that coming. So all the mitres are rough cut and I'm just going to pare down the walls now so that we can actually start seating these joints together. Like I say, this actual mitre I'm going to refine in the next episode though. So we'll just do this for the time being. So I'll put the chisel into the wall here and then just track it along that line along the top and just roll it up to match the mitre yeah should be all that one needs just do a little bit down the bottom as well one done So we're just going to test some of these joints now. So we've got number four here, number four. I put a little chamfer on the back of these tails to help them locate into the sockets. As I said, these aren't going to properly bottom out, but it'll just be a good test to see if I've done my job properly with the dovetailing side of things. That's a start. Very tight, but they are going in. I'm hesitant to bottom them out completely because we haven't refined that mitre, so I'm happy with that. We will finish that one in the next episode. And to be honest, I think that is where we'll call it there because for now I'm just gonna test all the other joints, get them stuck like I have with this one. And then in the next episode, we will refine the mitres, get cut in the groove in the back and possibly the groove for the shelf as well. Come on! <laughs> Ah, possibly the groove for the shelf as well. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to look at the dovetailing video tutorial that I've already done years ago. It's a bit of a ropey video, but you'll find a lot of useful things in it. Uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.